All right, good morning, Kim One. Mr. Kemper here with a video on acids and bases. So this is, I think, module 8.03 in your Canvas assignments. And they do a pretty good job of this unit, uh, but I'll just give you a little uh, uh, extension, a little maybe a different view of it. So uh, we'll just talk about acids and bases a little bit, and then on the next video I'm going to show you how to do calculations involving those, and that's unit 8.04. Okay, so an acid is any substance that produces H plus ions or hydronium ions in solution. Okay, okay. You could also produce a hydronium ion. Let's see how that works. So let's react HCl, hydrochloric acid, is an acid. We know that. So if I put that in water, what's going to happen is that hydrogen is going to be pulled off by the water molecule. Okay? And we're going to form what's known as a hydronium ion. And then what's left of that HCl after the water pulls the H plus off? It's just the Cl minus ion. Okay? So notice the definition I said it produces an H plus ion. Well, it does produce an H plus ion, but then that H plus ion immediately attaches to the water molecule to form this hydronium ion. So you'll see both definitions for an acid. It either produces an H plus ion in solution, or it produces a hydronium ion in solution. It really means the same thing. So another way of looking at this would be Either one of those two are equivalent, okay? So that's an acid. It produces a hydrogen ion or a hydronium ion in solution. Another way of looking at an acid, it is a proton donor, okay? It donates a proton to water. So notice how this hydrochloric acid molecule is donating a proton to the water molecule to form that, okay? So that's the second definition. Besides it produces H plus ions or hydronium ions, it's a proton donor. There are lots and lots of different acids, and you're probably familiar with a number of them. Things like ascorbic acid and vitamin C, lactic acid when you exercise. All of those things produce hydrogen ions or hydronium ions in solution. Phosphoric acid is another that's in a lot of soda pumps. Okay? So there are six strong acids, and I'll list them for you. HCl. H2SO4, HNO3, those are the three main strong acids that we see in the laboratory. There are three others that you won't see in the laboratory. Okay, Each of those are strong acids. What does that mean? It simply means that 100% of those molecules break apart. Okay. 100% dissociation. Okay? Any other acid you can think of is a weak acid. So, another weak acid, or a weak acid that you're very familiar with is vinegar. Okay? We can usually notice an acid in a formula because it's got an H right in the front. Okay? So that's a good clue that the substance you're dealing with is an acid. The hydrogen in the front. Notice uh, we've got that for pretty much every one of those. Now that's an acid as well, so it'll happen. Well, that hydrogen's going to pop off, and then what's left is going to be that acetate ion right there. Okay. Now really, we could write it like this as well, and have that hydrogen ion attached to a water molecule to form hydronium, but this is a little bit easier, a little shorter. Okay. So this is a weak acid. What does a weak acid mean? Well, less than 5%, usually, of those molecules break apart into hydrogen ions and the negative ion. So that's the definition of a weak acid. It still produces hydrogen ions, but way less, less than 5% of those molecules break down. It could be as high as up to 50%, but most weak acids are 5% or less that break down. Okay? So that's the definition of an acid. And they give you some other uh, 
information about acids in the, in the videos you'll see with the, the modules in Canvas. So let's look at bases. Okay. So a base is a substance that produces OH minus ions in solution. Okay, so hydroxide ions. So the most common one that you're familiar with is sodium hydroxide. So if I put that in water, so let's say I have some solid sodium hydroxide, and I put it in water, what it, the water's going to do is break apart those sodium hydroxide units and form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So notice the substance produces hydroxide ions in solution. That's a base. Okay. Now, sodium hydroxide is known as a strong base. That means 100% of those molecules would actually break down. Okay, so the strong bases are group 1 and 2 hydroxides. So that means sodium hydroxide, uh, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, things like that, and then a lot of places you'll see things like magnesium, calcium, barium hydroxide are also strong bases. That just means 100% of those things are breaking down. Okay. Let's look at a weak base. A very common weak base is ammonia. So you look at ammonia and say, well, gee, there's no hydroxide in there. How could that be a base? Well, if we look at it a little differently, if I show the reaction of ammonia with water, what you're going to see is that this base is going to accept a proton from water and form NH4 plus and what's left of the water molecule is a hydroxide ion. Okay? So the first definition of what a base is, a substance that produces hydroxide ion in solution. So ammonia is a base. Second definition for a base, it is a proton acceptor. Okay? So notice that this substance is accepting a proton from the water molecule to form that leaving hydroxide in solution, okay? So that is the second definition, proton acceptor, along with substance, a substance that produces hydroxide ion in solution. This is known as a weak base, okay? A weak base means that not all of those molecules will actually react with the water, and again, like acids, less than about 5% of those break apart, okay? So you're familiar with ammonia, in a lot of you know, cleaning solutions. Uh, strong bases like sodium hydroxide are in things like uh, oven cleaner, uh, Drano. They dissolve hair. They're very, very nasty materials. But they're very, very strong because you get 100% of those molecules breaking down, whereas ammonia, not so dangerous, only about 5% of those break down. Okay. So last thing in this video is something called acid-base neutralization. Acids and bases react together to neutralize the other one. So let's look and see how that works. <clears throat> so very simply, <clears throat> if I take an acid, hydrochloric acid, and react it with sodium hydroxide, that's an acid reacting with a base. Typically what happens when acids and bases react is they neutralize each other. And it is a type of double displacement reaction, which you guys have seen before. So the hydrogen and the sodium are going to swap places, in, like any double displacement reaction. So what you're going to find is, you're going to form NaCl and water. Okay, So that is a neutralization reaction. And in any neutralization reaction of a strong acid and a strong base, what you're going to find is you're going to form water, and you're going to form some salt. So remember, the term salt is a very general term, meaning just any positive negative ion combination. Sodium chloride happens to be the most common one, so we call it salt. But I could have um, a different acid-base neutralization. So let's do nitric acid reacting with 
potassium hydroxide. Okay, that's an acid, that's a base. Do the double displacement reaction, and what you're going to see is you're going to form KNO3 plus water. Okay, so if I do that double displacement reaction, the hydrogen and potassium are going to switch places. So I'm going to form potassium nitrate and water. So again, I've got a salt and I've got water. So that's what will always form in an acid-base neutralization reactant reaction is water and a salt. Okay? That's what we call it neutralization because water is a neutral substance. And we'll get to that in the next video and talk about pH, which I know some people have heard of. Okay? Uh, last detail. There are some other types of bases uh, that are a little more uh, advanced, but I think you guys are ready for it. If we look at things like carbonates, so like calcium carbonate is a base. How is that a base? Well, because it will react with acids to form water. Okay, so watch what happens. We're going to do a double displacement reaction. Okay, the calcium and the hydrogen are going to switch places. So I'm going to form a couple of different compounds. And remember, you have to make sure they're neutral compounds. Okay, so the calcium is going to go with the chlorine. Now, is that a neutral compound? We know it's not, right? So I can't form neutral compounds. I mean, I can't form non-neutral compounds. So the calcium and the chlorine are going to combine, but I'm going to need two of those chlorines to make sure it's a neutral compound. Okay? Now, we'll worry about balancing here in a second. So then the other compound form is the hydrogen is going to go with the carbonate. Okay, but that's not a neutral compound because we know carbonate is a negative two charge, hydrogen is a plus one. So I actually need two of those to make it a neutral compound. Okay, so I'm just doing double displacement reactions, making sure that I form neutral compounds. Okay, now I can balance the equation. I need two hydrogens, so I'll put a two there, and that gives me the two chlorines that I need. So that is an example of an acid and a carbonate neutralizing each other, okay? And you're always going to form a salt, okay, just like before. And then it's a little disguised here. This H2CO3, if I put that in water, that is also called carbonic acid. And carbonic acid, you're familiar with in soda pop. Carbonic acid is what happens when I put carbon dioxide in water. So really, H2CO3 is carbon dioxide mixed with water. That's what carbonic acid is. So when I neutralize a carbonate with an acid, I make a salt, I also make water, okay, just like the strong acids and bases, but I also form carbon dioxide, okay? So that is what happens when I mix a carbonate base with an acid. Salt, a salt, water, and carbon dioxide. If it's a hydroxide base, I make a salt and water, no carbon dioxide. Okay, so replay the video if you have a little bit of confusion about that. But that's an example of carbonates reacting with acids to neutralize. Okay, we'll see you next time.